What's up guys, Peter Von Panda here. Hey, as seen on TV item, I was watching TV late at night here and I saw a commercial for Gotham Steel Pans. Nothing sticks to this pan, that's what they say. Nothing sticks to it. Burn stuff in it, cook stuff in it. All of those little juicy bits that start getting carbonized, just wipe away. No sticking right there. And so I thought, why not give it a shot? I could use a new pan anyway. And I wanna see if this thing, we put it to the test if it really works. First of all, here is the pan itself. I know it's probably not gonna be the easiest thing in the world to see, but I'm gonna take you on a little journey here and kind of point out some of the things that I'm pretty concerned about. One of the things that I like actually is this, this handle on the far edge. A lot of pans don't have that. So you've got this gripping handle here. It's a nice big flat piece of metal, uh, polished. It's pretty substantial, three millimeters thick or so, and it's riveted pretty sturdily it looks like to the, the pan itself. We'll get all this plastic removed. Then the material on the pan is, I don't know what it is. You know, I know when Teflon was kind of a new thing and everyone was like, oh, Teflon, it's this miracle uh, material. And now every pan has Teflon. And now actually what they're saying is like, you don't want Teflon on pans because it kind of burns off under heat. It's kind of this copper look, you know, it's, it's this kind of copper kind of metallic, uh, finish to it. Don't confuse this with copper. If I were to pull out a penny here or something that's like a Moscow Mule Mug, you would not confuse this with copper. It's just kind of a copper color, kind of like, um, you know, BMW M3 and it's, you know, it's brilliant copper. Obviously not copper. It's just kind of a metallic paint. It's a little bit lighter than uh, that, but it, it is smooth and seems pretty durable. It's it kind of feels like a powder coated finish. I don't think that's what it is, and it's possible because powder coat stands up to a lot of abuse. You can see the rivets here that hold on this far end. And then let's take it to this end because this is where I really wanted to kind of call this Gotham Steel pan out and raise a concern that I might have. Is so I got this and unboxed it and I grabbed it by this handle as all of us would do. So you can see polished metal uh, riveted on here, but the handle is kind of flat. It, you can see here it's, it's slightly curved, kind of like a giant spoon handle, but it's not super wide. And it's, it's very, very flat. Um, so what I don't like about it is most pot handles that I've used are pretty thick. You know, you get your big chubby hands on it. It's kind of like a broom handle or something. You have nice, good purchase, good grip, nice and secure on that thing. But this is kind of flat. It's kind of like picking up a, 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 a large butter knife or something, you, you know? And so it's not the most comfortable thing to hand, hold for me. Yes, I can put my thumb here on this kind of, this concave portion and maybe brace it a little bit, but it's hard, it's maybe a little hard to explain because these edges aren't really rounded. They're, they're, they're fairly flat. They're not sharp by any means. It's just not that comfortable to hold. And this pan actually has pretty good weight. This is the 12 and a half inch pan. I wanted to get the full size pan here. Um, but it, it puts a lot of weight on this, in this end, and it's really kind of torquing my hand. You know, it's kind of, it really wants to twist down. And it's just not, a super comfortable thing to to hold. I I I wish, and I don't know why they didn't put like a uh, you know a plastic upper and lower um, clamped on piece or something, a riveted piece to give it a, a more round, kind of beefier uh, gripping surface. But it is what it is, and there's a hole here on the end. You can hang it up if you if you do that kind of thing in your kitchen. Um, the bottom here is has like a gray finish. I'm not sure what the deal is, what, what it is. It seems relatively durable, but the bottom here has kind of this polished surface area with ridges, uh, should help kind of uh, give you direct exposure to the metal of the, the pan. And so flame, especially if you're using gas, uh, but uh, you know, assuming electric too, would, would be kind of projected and, and focused right on this exposed metal. Uh, you know, expand and radiate around the pan nice and evenly. Uh, and I'm sure not putting that finish on this metal piece uh, allows for kind of the most direct 
conduction of heat from your flame into the pan itself. So let's go ahead. I'm not gonna cook things for you, but what I'm really curious about is this claim that this thing is, is, is super easy to maintain, nothing sticks to it. I'm gonna burn some marshmallows in this thing. We will burn some cheese in it. Let's give it a try and see how it goes. All right, guys. Hey, Peter Von Banda. Welcome back to the Panda Kitchen. Got the Gotham steel pan out here, and uh, we're going to go ahead and give this thing a little bit of a torture test. It says the titanium ceramic coating should resist burns. Now, I haven't done anything with this pan except show it to you before, and we're not going to add anything to it. No oil, butter, uh, Pam, any type of lubricant to it. We're just going to see what we can do to see if it can get stuck or to see if it sticks. And I'm going to turn the, the flame up here on high and just put this on here. Now finding things that will burn is not necessarily the easiest thing in the world. But I thought what we'd try is maybe a little cheese, a little chocolate, and then also some marshmallows which tend to get kind of messy. So, and then in between, I'm not gonna do anything except wipe it out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some cheese here and I'm gonna drop it right in the middle. This is shredded. So some of these pieces are going to melt quicker than others and it's probably going to, they're gonna like burn. I can show you, see it right there. Some of these smaller pieces that kind of scattered around are already boiling, bubbling, and should be nice and messy. Okay guys, this thing is smoking here pretty good and I've definitely got a lot of this stuff burnt and <laughs> I've got the fan roaring too because I'm actually going to fire off the smoke alarm here if I'm not careful. But as you can see, not only is it smoking and burning, but a lot of the edges are burnt. And you can see that it's actually sliding around pretty good. So I'm not going to turn it off. What I'm going to do here is just kind of try to get this out. And I'm just going to use kind of a damp paper towel and wipe the inside out and it's sizzling there pretty good and wipe everything out. All right. So first of all, let me tell you, got everything out and it sure looks pretty good. Uh, the pan is still smoking, so there's a little bit of residual oil from the cheese, but man, all right. So, so far, so good on that. Now let's try a little Hershey's bar and what I don't cook here, I might just eat, but I'm going to take couple pieces of this chocolate, just drop it on there. Um, take take two of these pieces here, drop it in, and then eat this one. Nom, nom, nom. Let's try burning this out a little bit. Okay guys, here again, I'm burning chocolate. There's a lot of smoke coming off this. And you can see that it's not only boiling around the edges, but it's nice and black. And you can see, man, it just kind of swims around in there. So I'm pretty impressed with that. Uh, again, we're going to go ahead and remove the chocolate with just the same damp paper towel. It actually just falls right out and you can see that chocolate is totally black on the back side. You can hear it sizzle as I just wipe it, wipe it out with paper towel again. Yeah, and so far, man, nothing sticking. Nothing sticking. Good to go. You can still see it smoking a little bit because of the residue, but looks good. So far, no problems. Now, let's go on to the last one here. I have three of the, or four of those giant kind of s'mores marshmallows. We're going to put them on there. Marshmallows are notoriously sticky, especially once they get hot, kind of just turn into a gooey, gluey mess. Let those cook a little while and try it out. All right, guys, these marshmallows are smoking like they're on fire. And actually what I did is I moved one of these marshmallows. You can see there, it kind of left a crust of black or brown burnt area. And then as they're moving around, they're totally left burn spots on there. Now the key is these marshmallows are moving around. They're probably gonna come out pretty easily. I've turned off the heat, but I wanna see now how tough is it to get that, that char off the, off the plate. So, Back to my little discard pile here. Uh, move the marshmallows off, nice and toasted. And now we open all that char, and that's clearly stuck. Um, you know, and generally, I'll tell you what, this marshmallow test 
was the hardest one, that's for sure. The other ones, the pan kind of helped it, or uh, handled it with a plum. As you can see here, the junk that's coming off there is totally pure char, but it is coming off. I'm actually surprised about that. The char from the marshmallows is obviously not just wiping off, but the pan being really hot, I'm gonna cool it off a little bit and then try wiping it out. Okay, it cooled the pan off with some water, so it's kind of wet. And now I wanna go in here and try to see what I can do to get the char off. I'm just using a paper towel. I haven't applied anything. I'm just using elbow grease. And what I can tell you is that, sorry for all the racket, that you absolutely can kind of wipe this off. Does it just wipe off without any resistance? No, the char from the from the marshmallows is a bit unique in that, like I said, it kind of turns to a goo and then <laughs> kind of burns on and creates this layer. But with just a little bit of effort, I am able to, you can see that it's kind of flaking off as a powder. So it's on there. But what's interesting is it's not stuck on there like it would be on other types of metal pans. So yes, I have to use a little effort with the, the marshmallow residue and the marshmallow burning, but I have no doubts that just a couple quick more passes and all this stuff will come off. So really impressed with both the cheese and the chocolate came off, but I still have some, some little, little black flecks there from, from the marshmallow. So if you're gonna toast marshmallows in this pan, keep in mind that might be a little harder to get off. Uh, but the other stuff I'm really impressed and I'll actually be using this this Gotham steel which I which I bought and seems to do a reasonably good job of what it advertises Peter Von Panda out <laughs>